welcome back to the channel everybody I am uh, working the late night shift probably looks brighter on camera than it actually is the moon's up I'm frantically trying to get all this done for El Dorado days 2024 in the previous clips um, drilling and tapping this hole I am building the sensing line to run between the unloader and the head of the compressor um, that's the latest task uh, I still got to make up the, the new belt um, I uh, removed the um, china cap exhaust because every time I walk around this trailer that exhaust would just go Ugh. This thing has got to weigh 20 pounds at least. It's heavy. And I've got the nipple and the elbow screwed in as far as I dare. You know, you, this is pipe thread. It's tapered. If you screw it in too far, you run the risk of splitting the cast iron head. All oh, that thing just kept wanting to blip. So I said to heck with it. I got uh, some one inch uh, pipe and uh, a cap, drilled it just like the existing exhaust on the smaller LB and uh, put it in there. So that's the exhaust. This has been a refreshing break from working on these two rascals. I've got an oiler issue on this one. The oiler that, oiler that delivers oil to the rocker arm ain't doing its job there's a little reservoir in there and this thing runs for a while and builds up pressure and fills the reservoir it's supposed to start delivering oil through the tube onto the felt pad to feed the rockers and uh so far that ain't working this one about wore out my arm trying to get it started it's fuel related i got good hot spark since I'm running on propane, I gotta figure out the fuel delivery. So, yeah. And uh, I'm out of time. <laughs> but hey, I was a scheduler, you know, for 20 years for the US Navy as a civilian, and um, panic deadlines were a way of life every day. So I guess I know how to deal with this. I'm no plumber, I'm a tin bender. A tin bender doing plumbing. I'll stop right there. I hope I got this fairly well aligned. Never been a big fan of these um, hobo freight tubing benders. I mean, they're okay, but I mean, they work, but I don't know. I'm sure there's better stuff out there. Well, I hope my measurements were correct. Yeah, their little scale on the side here is not exactly accurate, but it's close enough. Close enough for eyeballing. So, yeah. You know what? It's, it's extra quiet in the shop. It's because I um, have a, don't have the portacool on today. We've been unseasonably warm running uh, mid-90s when it should be mid to low 80s. And uh, typical of our seasonal change, all of a sudden this morning it dropped 10 degrees. <laughs> it's uh, nice and cool, and it's going to drop several degrees every morning and clear up to El Dorado days. Uh, it's going to be mid-70s, so that'll be pleasant. Uh, I'm going to cut. I just got this marked. I'm going to cut this to length. I'll bring you back when we get ready to put it on 
with the uh, ferrules and compression nut. This is a uh, cobalt um, deburring tool. Looks like a clone of a uh, Nioga. If machinists that are watching are familiar with this stuff, but um, it was inexpensive and it works quite well. So I'll get this deburred and then we'll uh, we'll get it installed. Got my uh, compression nuts and ferrules on here. So let's see if I can uh, make this all work. One sensing line complete. For those of you that may be concerned about uh, chips and shavings getting into the pipe when I drilled and tapped it, I didn't show it on camera, but I got the shop back out and sucked that out real good. Then uh, put some grease on the end of a small screwdriver and went in there and fished around a little bit and picked up whatever little bit of swarf was left. So yeah, no worries, that's all clean. Okay, I've got to align that compressor to this uh, pulley. Originally, I was going to clamp a string to this pulley and string it across there, but then I realized, ha, this pulley is narrower than this one, so that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to do a little trial and error here and try to get these aligned up as best I can. And then I'll just hand crank the uh, compressor wheel over and, and see if the belt stays reasonably centered on both pulleys. So I'm gonna do that off camera because that's a lot of just tedious back and forth and not much interest there. I'll show you the finished result when I'm done. I raided the scrap hoard and made up a couple of Mongo washers. So when I get this installed, start cranking it down, they won't sink into the wood from the bottom side. I got an ear broken off here on the cast iron base of the compressor. So I just made this little block and um, drilled a hole in it and cut it in half. So that'll give the bolt and washer a solid surface to seat on and not cock one way or the other. So yeah, I'll get under here and bolt this thing down. You probably can't tell by the camera, but I believe I am pretty much aligned. And I've been spinning this thing over um, by hand just to... Uh... Mm. Oh, there you go, Duke. <laughs> if you're watching, there's the pig sound. Yeah, the pig. Mm. So I've just been turning it over, and mm. the belt has stayed um, right on the center of both pulleys. Mm. So I'm happy mm. with that. All bolted down, got big Mongo washers underneath. I'm going to quit spinning that because you're probably getting annoyed with that pig sound anyway. Okay, it's uh, time to get after this belt. I've got to, um, if I can find it, pull the center pin out of that lacing and separate that and then get this up here wrapped around and then measure how much gap I got. And then... Um, Cut me a piece accordingly and then get that belt lacer out and um, start uh, making up the belt. I just realized I may have caused some confusion amongst uh, you newer viewers and subscribers. In some videos you hear me say I'm a tin bender. In other videos you hear me say I was a scheduler. Well, I was both. I did about a, a little over a third of my career in the sheet metal shop. And then the rest of my career, I uh, was in the scheduling division. So I hope that answers any questions you might have. Okay, I need a belt five and a half inches long. Put that down so I don't forget. Yeah, I did both. And before my federal career, I worked you know, the sheet metal trade for several years before I went into federal service. So there you go. All right. Uh, let me get the gear together and let's make a belt. All right. Lay this out. I'm 
want to cut this. There's a lacing pattern in this that I want to keep consistent with the existing belt. Sheet metal snips. It's part of the tin bender. Fasten this belt lacer right down to the, the step on the uh, trailer, just temporarily. Voila! These uh, lacing clips, they have a long side and the short side and they fit in slots in the machine and as you install these you slide this uh, pin in to hold them in place and then once you get all the in my case 21 that's how many are existing once you get them all in and held with this pin then you slide your your belting in and uh, put a little pressure on it and then pull this or actually no you uh, crimp it down first then pull the pin out I think that's the way it goes. Okay, I've got my uh, lacing uh, clips loaded in the machine, alternating short and long on the bottom, as you can see. They're held in place with this pin. You slide your uh, piece of belting in there, nice and firm and snug, and then clamp down on those handles, and uh, one side of the lacing is all done. right. My assistant is here. We're going to make a belt, or lace a belt rather. Okay, you can just put pressure on it. So there you go. That half of the belt is laced. I'll do the other side off camera since now you see how it works. Well, this is how your great grandpa or great great grandpa or grandma, for that matter, did it back in the day. I'm uh, installing the, the pin. You know, I don't know if a uh, local hardware store kept a belt lacer hanging around. Uh, maybe the local blacksmith shop. Who knows? But, um, sorry, my big fat hand is in the way. You really can't see what I'm doing. But just splicing those laces together. And it's all held with this pin. And that's it. So there's a little slack in here, which uh, I will leave because when you, s I don't want to be pulling against all of the machinery while I'm starting the engine. As soon as it starts, it likes to slide forward and that'll automatically tension the belt. I've got a clamp on the skid below to act as a stop so it doesn't go too far. But anyway, the belt is now complete. Well, I pulled the plug back out because I couldn't roll this thing over. 
And I thought, oh God, I got a blown head gasket and water from the hopper is seeped into the cylinder and I'm hydro locked. There was a speck, and I mean just a speck of water on the electrode of the spark plug. Which means it wouldn't fire. I'm getting nothing coming out of this. No spray, no nothing coming out of this uh, cylinder. So, uh, I don't know. Um, and I'm not seeing any evidence of water in there. So I really don't know. Well, I'm going to put the plug back in it and um, try and start it and see what happens. Ever get that feeling in the pit of your stomach? See that shiny glistening? That's water. I got, it's not a fully blown head gasket, but it's definitely seeping. I gotta pull that head off. That ain't looking pretty at all. And that is not head gasket material. Yeah, well, got a doctor appointment in the morning. Looks like a trip to Napa. In the meantime, I'm gonna pull those valves out and uh, get some WD-40 on them so they don't rust. Well, they probably already got rust on them. I'll probably be lapping these too. Well, fortunately for me, the seats and the valves look great. No pitting. Um, the intake valve definitely needs a little touch up, but not bad. I'm gonna gingerly peel this gasket off of here and save it for a pattern. And then um, wire wheel this mess, soak it all down with WD-40 and uh, just to keep it from getting any rust. See if I can get the right gasket material from Napa tomorrow morning. Build a head gasket, um, reinstall everything by tomorrow afternoon and try and start it. Because this is Tuesday, Thursday morning. This has got to be in Tombstone. Uh, that's our staging day. So I may have a little opportunity to work on it at Tombstone, but uh, I'm also helping setting up the show. So, <laughs> hey, welcome to Old Iron. Once again, my old pal Jim came through in a big way and uh, supplied me with a, quite a hoard of uh, gasket making material. The original gasket I took off, this guy, is the same stuff as this. This is Garlock 3000 and it's Blue Guard and it is rated for oil and gas and head gas. The only problem is it's really hard and stiff and uh, that surface is just rigid and hard. There's no gift to it. And I think that may be why this failed. I'm gonna uh, set up a piece of plywood and some emery cloth and take the head and, and work it around, sanding on it a little bit and see if I got any highs or lows just to be sure. But this is oil, oil field grade gasket. And that is, um, what the heck am I trying to say? Graphite, graphite based. And so uh, this is a little bit more pliable. And uh, so I'm gonna make the new head guest out of that. Now I'm doing all of this off camera cause I am trying to go hundred miles an hour here and get this done. You've already seen it on the smaller gray engine anyway, you know, taking it all the way down, doing the valves and all that. So. Uh, I'm just going to uh, turn the camera off and go at it and then bring you back when I have something, anything to tell you. It's the moment of truth. Did I succeed or is this one big epic failure?
I didn't do anything. Yeah, baby. The Oracle of Power from the Past, Larry Caston and his St. Mary's Machine Company four horsepower semi-automatic engine built in 1911. You're not man enough, Lance. It's amazing those wood troughs survived all these years. 100 years, at yep. least, you know, maybe more, probably more. So, so this setup was originally designed for what? Uh, so I got these from my miner. Okay. Yeah, there were like 20 of these in a row for some kind of engine. I didn't ask him what kind of engine it was. Yeah. Maybe a big rear brake horse and a vertical or something. But they're like the 1890s, 1900s. So some kind of a sluice system for mining then, huh? Oh, no. Cooling the engine. Oh, that's oh, okay. That's thermal site. I got gotcha. you. Yep, yep, yep. That's that's pretty cool. Sucks water out of the tank, cools the engine, and then 
runs the water through the trough to cool the water back down. See, originally this used to pump the water, so I didn't eat this. Yeah. It just used well water. Yeah. But, uh, Early form of radiator. I take back what I said to you about not being man enough. What are we rigging up here? Well, I'm fixing to change the carburetor, the mixer. Oh, on uh, the uh, Ajax? Yeah, on the Ajax. Man, I wish this wind had quit blowing. It's been a windy weekend. Well, I'll take the true metric wrench or not. <laughs> we did a... Um, White elephant gift a few years back up north, and um, one of my buddies in the club, he went up to get his his gift, and he opened it up, and it was a crescent wrench and a pair of pliers and a screwdriver, and he was walking back to his seat, and I said, it's not going to do you any good, Daryl. It's metric. <laughs> Make it air. quit running on me and uh, a big crack opened up in the coil cover. 
all the way down on this side. And there's another one you can't see, it's on the other side there. The crack opened up there so this thing's arcing all over inside instead of putting power out through the wire to the plug. But she had a really good, a really good run this weekend. I'm really happy with it. And it runs really good, as you saw in the opening clips when I started it up. I am just tickled pink. This thing's back in action. So um, I've got that other mag at home. I'm talking to the experts here amongst the old iron guys, and they all pretty much agree that the impulse is not working on mine. Probably just a broken spring, so I'll pull it apart this week, and if that's it, I'll be in business. trying to resurrect all this cast iron in time for uh, the El Dorado Days uh, event in Tombstone, Arizona. And um, it was a lot of fun. First day was windy as all get out. And uh, the usual foib foibles and mechanical breakdowns. But we all had a good time, ate a lot of great food. But it's time for all things to come to an end, good things. And I thank you all for joining me. And uh, we'll see you real soon on the next one. Bye for now, everybody.